Hey everyone, thanks for joining. I know been a while since we've done an update, but exciting one to go over. Recent award winners, the Q, but also, of course, want to do an update on just general Q business. Kurt, freshly back from India, but I know going next week, um, but we can dive into a bunch of things. First things first, Kurt, how are you? Good, Jason. It's good to see you. And if you guys heard the fire truck in the background, we're on fire. So, uh, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, uh, been a lot going on since we last spoke. So looking forward to the update. Yeah, no, awesome. Like seeing a, a ton of stuff. I know uh, we're going to chat influencers a ton given the award. Um, but where do you want to start? A lot of questions in general. How is the channel performing? Advertiser questions. A lot of stuff about, you know, I read something pretty funny. They said they used to announce all of these blue chip advertisers and do they just have too many now? Um, are some of those still, you know, big wins for the company? How's advertising going, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, do you want to kind of just kick off with a general India update and then maybe we can filter to influencers? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think um, I just returned from India. I'm actually going back uh, this week again, uh, there'll be a little announcement that we haven't made yet about why that is. It's not it's it's specific thing, but I think people will be happy to hear that. Um, uh, it's it's I'll, I'll, the hint I'll give is it was driven by our relationship with Times of India, which I've said many times remains very strong. So it's motivated through that, but we'll we'll that'll be coming soon. Um, but yeah, India. Uh, look, we've diversified the business, and the between the Maxim Tech acquisition and getting into the gaming thing, between stuff that we're doing around our data initiatives there, between the launch of the connected TV channels, um, there's a lot that's going on there, and Chatterbox obviously as well, and we'll talk about that more here in a second. But I think really as an overall business objective, I mean, a lot of people have said, why aren't they putting out press releases? Where is this? Blah 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 blah. The fact of the matter is, is that we've been really heads down in uh, driving ourselves to get to cash flow break even by middle of 2023. I mean, you've seen the largest companies in the world. I mean, Bob Iger from Disney just came out and made the announcement of, you know, they're cutting 7,000 people and how there's, you know, Disney's drive to get, you know, higher results financially. Uh, Google's doing it. Amazon's doing it. Everybody's doing it. And the market's demanding it. Well, we're no different. And so... We've heard the market. We know that people want us to, to get to that point where we can sustain ourselves. Um, and that really wasn't where we were at a year ago, uh, certainly not a year and a half or two years ago. And so we've pulled back a little bit on uh, some of, I guess I'll call it the new launch type initiatives that we were putting into the market. I expected to have more connected TV channels going right now six months ago than we do today. That's because we're optimizing for those that we have. We're doing all of that in pursuit of uh, a stronger financial position overall. So I think in terms of India, most of the time that I spent there and all the meetings that I was having for the most part was about optimization of our existing products. Obviously with Maxim Tech, we're huge believers that the loudspeaker that I talk about, our reach to 125 million people can be used very powerfully for this games uh, business that we're now getting into. Games business is exploding in growth in India. And so there's a lot of stuff that we just haven't announced yet that will be forthcoming in Q1 and Q2 of this year around that. Um, so, you know, don't take lack of a press release a week about a new product to be perceived as a lack of major activity. It's about optimization more than new products over the last, I'd say, really three to six months, which is what's driving that. Yeah. No. And so, you know, business crushing, optimizing, like you said, still have a lot of those advertisers. I know that was a, a bunch of those questions um, that you mentioned. And, you know, you've mentioned you have a, a ton of these guys. So. Yeah. I mean, look, we, we haven't announced Q4 results and we won't for a while because it's our year end. So it takes longer for that all to get audited and done. But, you know, I, I've said and can tell people Q4 will be a record breaking uh, quarter for us. Uh, we expect Q1 that we're in, it will blow through the number that we did last Q1. And so these things are all continuing. I'm right, our chart's going to continue to look the same way it's been looking. Um, um, with that said, uh, you know, there's intense pressure to, uh, to get to profitability. And so that's what we've also equally been, been doing. As far as the advertisers go, Look, the truth is two years ago when we made a lot of those announcements, we were so thrilled to get a major advertiser uh, onto the platform. 
we now have, I think it's 77 or 78 advertisers <laughs> on our uh, on our various platforms, not including Chatterbox. So if you had Chatterbox, over 100. Um, and that's everybody from Procter & Gamble, Unilever, Amazon, Google, Coke, Pepsi, uh, and companies, major multi-billion dollar companies in India like Dauber and, and Parlay and others that people wouldn't necessarily know of. So we've got a massive base of advertisers now. That's obviously hugely important to us because that's our lifeblood. That's our where our revenue comes from. We're always pursuing getting bigger and better deals. But the reason you don't see those announcements coming out is because that's, it's kind of like part of our day-to-day -day business right now where it wasn't two years ago. Um, so so that's, that's the answer to the advertiser question. I think on the channels uh, side, the connected TV channels are not doing as well as we thought they were gonna do from a revenue generation perspective at this point. It kind of is what happened here in the US and North American market in the early days of connected and smart TV channels, where it took a while for the advertisers to get on board and ramp ramp up. We're, we're doing a lot of that. You'll see another announcement coming from us here soon about something really exciting happen, happening for us in the connected TV space. And that space just continues to grow. So we're huge, huge believers in the future benefits of what are gonna happen there. But again, rather than launching more and more channels, which is kind of where we were headed, we're optimizing for the channels that we've already got onto the platforms before we roll more out. So um, so all this stuff is uh, is active right now. And, and you know we think the results that people will see financially as we go forward through 2023 will reflect what I say over and over again, which is that it's absurd that we have the share price that we have right now. I mean, our company's worth a third of what it was two years ago when we had a 10th of what we have now in terms of the depth and breadth of our product line and our, our revenue. So yeah. it's just, you know, it's just a reflection of a, of a bad market, not a reflection of our business from our point of view. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, we haven't even talked to influencers just yet. I mean, uh, influencer business, I mean, clearly crushing it. Um, congratulations on this award. You know, I'd obviously love for you to to dive into that. And, you know, obviously now that there's movies being, you know, turned out post-COVID, obviously looks like influencer marketing has, has taken off. And I don't want to say you guys are the market leader, but judging by the awards I'm seeing and, uh, you know, everything else, you guys must be doing pretty well. You want to yeah, well, there are, you know, there are influencer marketing agencies here in the US and India that are bigger than us. But I would say that we're really carving out a reputation as being one of the premium uh, uh, companies in that space. Uh, our US business, which again, I don't speak probably as much about in the past as you'll be hearing from me about as we go forward, including the award announcement th that we just made. Um, that business is talk about crushing it that business is really really moving right now i mean it's it's growing very very quickly uh this award that we just announced uh um, you know, to, the uh, Association of National Advertisers, the Chicago Auto Show, this is a major award for us. I mean, we're up competing against, you know, major automotive brands that have huge campaigns that they've done socially, um, and we won it. Uh, last year, it was won by Honda. We won it with Hyundai this year. And that was also a multicultural campaign. Um, we've become very, very strong or building the strength in the multicultural area, which is also a big area of growth in uh, the creator economy and in influencer marketing. So here in the U.S., we're really building something that we have a huge amount of belief in as well. I mean, I just read an article on the weekend that uh, there's a bunch of creators that are part of Super Bowl ads. Um, and and you, people might have seen them on the weekend. Uh, there's a prediction that in you know next year's Super Bowl or two years from now, certainly the creators will dominate. Online influencers will dominate the spokespeople for these brands at, in, for Super Bowl ads. So this is the shift that's happening. Where five years ago, using a creator to to, monet, to uh, uh, market a brand was a nice to have or a, a secondary thing. To moving to where it is today where it's the first thing that they're talking about same thing if you're launching a movie or a video game same thing if you're launching a car to that you want to get a young audience or a multicultural audience so we're very very bullish on what's happening that the other piece is that as, as a result of all of that we've realized there's an increasingly large opportunity for us, us to merge the assets and capabilities of what we have in india with the assets and capabilities of what we have in the us 
And as global brands and big advertisers that we work with are starting to roll out bigger campaigns globally, that's why we made the announcement last week about starting to put those two things together and have, the, have them work in conjunction. So the net of it all is those businesses are growing really well, and we see that being a huge opportunity for us beyond all the channels and everything else that we're doing and games and, and other stuff that we've got in the hopper. So that's where we're, we're going to see, you'll see a lot can, more now. Can you talk about any of those, uh, those clients? I know, uh, you know, kind of competitive wise, I know a lot of these, uh, you know, these big companies sometimes don't enjoy that, but is there anything yeah. you can mention uh, on the I mean, video? This is, this is part, this is part of the challenge for us because most of the time, I mean, there's a very, very big client that we have that we do major campaigns for that we specifically in our, you know, contract with them are prohibited from uh, mentioning our working relationship publicly, specifically. I mean, it's in the agreement. So, um, you know, can't talk about them. Um, uh, and and, and I, I do know that sometimes you'll see announcements where people say, you know, a major motion picture studio or a major automotive manufacturer, and we've just closed it. We, we've chosen not to do that. Maybe we should. I don't know. We've chosen. I don't really love those type of announcements. I like announcements that are specific about who it is and what you're doing and what, what the point is. Um, so we're pushing on that. We're, we're, we're working on the PR front, something like this award announcement. We can obviously, that's public knowledge and information. So we can, we can sort of toot our own horn and talk about it. Same is true with Chatterbox in India. So yeah, part of the reason you don't hear us talk more about it is while the financial results are awesome, the ability to sort of talk publicly about it is less available to us. Yeah. No, then interesting. I mean, the and then so it makes sense. I mean, the next stage of, of the conversation, a, a lot of questions, and I know you touched on it briefly. Um, you know, QU uh, USA merging, you know, a little bit closer together with Chatterbox, and you know, kind of growing this U.S. dominance you guys are having in the influencer, you know, business to you know what feels like worldwide. Um, do you want to talk about that anymore? I know you already briefly. Yeah, I think it. you know. I, I think ultimately. Um, you know, I've spoken in the past about how uh, M&A has driven my old uh, lineage with Lionsgate and where Scott Patterson was, et cetera. I'm a huge believer that to really grow a business, it's got to be a combination of organic growth mixed with really smart M&A transactions. We're always looking for transactions, whether they're smallish uh, in terms of their initial financial impact, like a Maxim Tech, or whether there's even stuff that we're looking at that could be much bigger and more transformative. There, I think there's a real opportunity in the influencer marketing space for that to be something that we're that we can move with in 2023 and beyond. Uh, public markets and you know capital market situation isn't necessarily conducive to that right now, but we're we're always looking at that. That's a concept. I, mean, I spent a lot of time evaluating companies, so people can expect that that's something that we're doing. I think people are going to see as soon as this year the 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 exciting nature of what the Maxim Tech uh, gaming acquisition is going to start to mean. So um, M&A and the influencer marketing uh, front is something that's on our radar screen for sure. Interesting. Cool. Well, look, uh, those are a lot of the kind of initial questions I know and a great update. Is there any uh, any emails you're getting and uh, stuff you want to kind of address in a video that other people uh, might have? Yeah. I think people have been maybe a little disappointed that I haven't been as vocal and out there and in sort of social media and telegram and all these things uh, as much as I was at one point. Um, a lot of it's because I have stuff that I just can't talk about, frankly. And a lot of it's because a lot of it's because of the spam that's on all those sites now. And a lot of it is because we've been so heads down. So um, I think you'll see that start to pick up. I mean, look, it's only the beginning of February, mid-February. So you'll see a lot of that start to pick up as we roll across 2023. And look, there's some big stuff that we're working on right now, whether it be close and get there or not in short order remains to be seen. But people can rest assured that... Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually sleeping less than I think I was a year and a half ago. So, uh, no rest for the weary We're Everybody's, everybody's going hard right now. Awesome. Cool. Well, look, well, thanks so much for taking the time. I know we were overdue to do one and I know we're going to start uh, doing more of these more often, but thanks so much for taking the time and safe travels in India. Cool. All right. Thanks, Jason. See you soon.